In this lecture, we will discuss four concepts that are critical to digital filters. State, linearity, shift invariance, and causality. In DSP, our systems are as time dependent and store information based on past inputs. In a standard digital filter, this information is stored in the delay registers. This stored information is called the state of the system. More formally, the state of a system at a given time is a minimal set of variables which together with the current input x of n uniquely define y of n. Since this filter is defined by the following difference equation, the state of the system would be the set x of n minus 1 and y of n minus 1. Since our system is defined by two functions, the state and the input, we define y of n to be the summation of the system's response to the input and to the initial state. We call y sub x of n the zero state response. The zero state is when all of the delay registers equal zero. We call y sub s of n the zero input response. The zero input response is what y of n would be if we only input zero for all eternity. We call this property of y of n the decomposition property. The homogeneity property tells us that if we multiply x of n by a scalar, then we will scale y of n by that same scalar. The additivity property tells us that if we add two input signals together, then y of n should equal the sum of the system's response to each input separately. The superposition property tells us that the homogeneity property and additivity property can be combined. This a system is said to be zero state linear if the superposition property is true for this system when the delay registers all equal zero. A system is said to be zero input linear if the superposition property is true for the system when the input is always zero. Finally, we say that a system is linear if it satisfies the decomposition property and both y sub x of n and y sub s of n are linear. Generally, zero state linearity is much more important and is therefore often called linearity. Here is an example of a linearity proof. Suppose we have a filter that averages the value of three samples to create y of n. To check for linearity, we need to see if the superposition property holds. Let's create two inputs, x sub 1 of n and x sub 2 of n, and multiply them both by different constants, a and b. If we add them together and enter the sum into our system, we would obtain this output. Notice that everything has been scaled by a third, and the inputs that enter the system at the same time, n minus 1, n, and n plus 1, are grouped together. If we rearrange the output, we can group the, the x of 1 terms together, and the x2 terms together, and then once we rearrange, it is easy to see that the left side is equal to a times y sub 1 of n and the right side equals b times y sub 2 of n. Linearity holds for this system. In general, if the system equation consists of only adding and multiplying, the system is linear. If the system's equation looks something like this, like our earlier filter, the system is also linear. We say that a system is shift invariant if a shift in the input always causes a corresponding shift in the output. A system is causal if the current output always depends on the past. Systems that are not causal are called non-causal. Non-causal systems are impossible to make for systems 
that produce an output as soon as we acquire the samples for x of n. If we can store all of the samples before we begin processing, then we can create a non-causal system. We use non-causal systems all the time in image and music signal processing. An example non-causal system would be if we wanted to divide all samples of x of n by the maximum value in x of n. For example, if the maximum value of x of n was at x sub 5, then the filter would look like this. Notice that x0, x1, up to x4 all depend on a future sample, x5. Systems that look like this will always be causal.